The U.S. Navy has purchased its first new anti-ship missile in more than 30 years as it tries to keep with growing foreign navies brandishing their own ship-killing missiles. The Navy on Thursday announced a contract for the first 23 long-range anti-ship missiles, an agreement worth $68 million. More missiles will undoubtedly follow. Since 1977, the U.S. Navy relied upon the Harpoon missile as its go-to-ship killer. Launched from the deck of a cruiser or destroyer, the Harpoon could strike targets at distances of up to 67 miles, flying at sea skimming altitudes of 30 feet or less to avoid enemy radar detection. Harpoon had a 468-pound high-explosive warhead and was so successful that the military spun off a land attack version, SLAM. The end of the Cold War and the dissolution of the Soviet Union in 1991 left the U.S. Navy without a peer to compete with. The wars of the post-9-11 period compounded the issue, as the Navy struggled to support land wars in Afghanistan, Iraq, and elsewhere. But now, as the Chinese Navy continues to grow in size and aggressiveness and Russian Navy answers to an increasingly adventurous and totalitarian state, the U.S. Navy finds the realm of ship versus ship combat to be an increasingly viable prospect. Enter the long-range anti-ship missile, or LRASM. LRASM is actually a spin-off a U.S. Air Force program, the Joint Air to Surface Standoff Missile Extended Range, JASM. That one was designed to strike targets from a distance, allowing the aircraft launching the missile to stay clear of enemy air defense networks. Sleek and stealthy. The Jasser can penetrate enemy air defenses and blow up its target with a 1,000-pound high-explosive warhead. Lorazm is designed to be carried in MK.41 missile silo, standard equipment on all U.S. Navy destroyers and cruisers. The Harpoon missile, by contrast, couldn't fit in Mark 41 silos and had to be installed in box launchers on the deck. As a result, Navy ships were limited to just eight harpoons at a time. Depending on the ship, a cruiser or destroyer could theoretically carry 90 or more LRASMs, at the expense of other missiles. This Lockheed Martin promotional video does a pretty good job of outlining the missile's capabilities. The missile is initially fed targeting data by the ship that launches it, then by satellite. The missile can be programmed to fly around obstacles or non-combatants such as islands or commercial shipping by traveling from pre-programmed waypoint to waypoint. The missile's artificial intelligence system allows it to make decisions about penetrating defenses based on emerging information, coordinate attacks with other LRASMs in flight, and pick out its target from a mass of ships in front of it. The system is advanced enough that it can not only pick out its target from an entire task force, but it can pick a specific part of the ship to attack. The new missile is not just for surface ships. It's in the process of being cleared for flight with F-18E-F Super Hornets and F-35 Joint Strike Fighters, and because it was based on the Jasser, is a natural fit for the Air Force's B-1B Lancer Heavy Strategic Bomber. Breaking defense hints that the weapon will eventually find its way to U.S. Navy submarines, likely launched from vertical launch silos that currently serve up Tomahawk missiles.